What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our people. The people who are kind, people who are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger about bigger. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I want to move on now to organic organic foods and give Simon a chance to talk. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, there's this thing about organic food being seemingly more healthy. Mm -hmm. Is it really? Yeah, I believe it is. I think that there's some research um, that shows that the nutritional content is much higher in more organic food. I think the other one is just common sense. Um, I think the statistics show that on average, the average person can the, I think fruit and veg um, is sprayed with, I think, a gallon of pesticides a year. Mm. So even, and I mean, the pesticides are designed not to wash away, like in rain and stuff. So um, that works out to, I mean, if you, even if you say only half of it is still on the fruit and veg when you take it, that's the equivalent of taking about six mil of mm -hmm. pesticides every day. But that's what the organic the retailers say and the organic mm -hmm. farmers, but we have uh, we have some studies to show that actually uh, it's inconclusive. Mm -hmm. the, the studies reveal that uh, it is inconclusive evidence that there are health benefits from consuming organic foods for illnesses such as heart disease and cancer. And the main benefit from organic foods is the absence of pesticides, mm -hmm. rather than all the other mm -hmm. health benefits that are touted. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with this? Or would you refute it? I don't know. I, I find it also. It also tastes better. I think you can almost fresh. Yeah. Maybe organic yeah. food will generally taste better than um, conventionally produced food. Okay, but the fact that it, it does not contain pesticides, mm. I think, is already a very important plus. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <coughs> pesticides increase the risk of various types of cancer. The, uh, it affects the uh, nervous system. And reproductive problems. Perhaps I should leave it to the doctor to say what they do. You know, I think you're very correct on those points. So I think you've, you've kind of hit most of the problems that are related to pesticides. So and I think that that's that's a reason uh, why why people are moving towards the organic movement. Uh, and uh, I guess I personally uh, we don't really consume that much. But since my son is born, he's ten months. I think things have changed in the house now. It's more <laughs> organic uh, than anything else. Uh. I think it's the volume of the pesticides that you put on. As I said, you know, many of the farmers in Singapore are not organic farmers in the real sense of the word because your neighbour mm. might spray it. Yeah, yeah. But even they are allowed to use pesticides mm. and, and chemi uh, chemical fertiliser and chemical pesticides. But the amount they use is very controlled because the runoff from the farm mm. goes into, into a, a place and the, the government, the ABA the checks water. it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's the amount that is used. But, you know, when we import 95% of vegetables and stuff from mm. these countries where they have no conscience, how do you know what they put in? And the systemic, uh, uh, the systemic uh, poison that they put in the ground that goes into the tree, even the, the insects won't eat it. Yeah. So, you know, like the, yes. the ladies who come to my farm, the Aso will say, Wow, you know, your guava uh, got hole, you know. Yes. Well, the market guava uh, got no hole. I say, yeah, the market guava, even the, the insects won't eat it because the insect, you know, you'll die if you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a systemic, it's a systemic poison that they put in the ground. Yeah. Okay, let me just share some interesting statistics with you. Uh, this is the pesticide contents of their ranking. According to this study, the worst are peaches. Mm -hmm. um, they have the highest pesticide load and uh, I don't know what score they use but the score is 100 for peaches. Lowest down are onions. Onion has a pesticide score 1. Apples 89, okay. celery 85, yeah. nectarines 84, cherries 75, imported grapes 65, cucumbers 52, plums 45, Tangerine 38, tomatoes 30, sweet potatoes 30, papaya 21, broccoli 18, cabbage 16, mango 9, pineapple 7, 
sweet corn two, avocado one. Mm. Think about mm. all of the ones that have the high numbers. Mm. Those are the ones that are the most popular, but the highly fresh perishable types. So mm. of course, they, no need, they need to have mm. more yeah. stuff to keep them plumped up until mm. they reach the supermarket. But in, the insects won't bite the onions anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like so we do companion <laughs> planting, yeah. we plant yes. lemongrass yes. among mm. the fruit trees mm. and all that. Yes. So the insects are kept away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 And I want to ask you, why are organic foods so much more expensive than non-organic food? That discourages I, people. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I, I think that in Singapore, I think just the, there's not sufficient demand at the moment. I mean, I, I mean, I estimate that organic should really be about thirty percent more than than conventional. It costs about three times more. Yeah, three yeah. to five times more. Yeah. yeah. And also, sorry, yeah. retailers see it as. Uh, you know those people who who are richer are ones yeah. who scared to die, yeah, yeah. right? Yes. So they can more. can pay yeah. more. You see, yeah. it's one of those vicious mm. cycles. Because yeah. 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 poor people don't care what they eat. Yeah. Anyhow, they have no time to worry whether it's yeah. you know it's organic or not. You see. But you also look at the look at the effort that it takes to till one hectare mm. of mm. organic land yeah. versus mm. pure organic land. Yeah. The yield of organic yeah. land yeah. is about. 65 to 70 percent of one hectare yeah. of one that's dumped yeah. with all sorts yeah. of stuff. But you see, unless they net it, you know, unless yes. you grow under netting, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the requirement, and also the thing is, if you don't put in chemical fertilizers, mm -hmm. the productivity of that plant will be lesser. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like if you if you grow a guava mm -hmm. tree with chemical pesticide or one without chemical pesticide, you can look at the, the fruit, you know? Yeah, and the size of the fruit, etc. You know, the, mm. it, it is pumping it up with mm. like hormones, like, you know? Yeah. yeah? So basically it's that, is it? Mm. So I think basically it's, it's like what I say, it's, it's in economics, you call it the, the, the economies of scale. Mm. In large scale agriculture, you've got those economies of scale. Mm. You know, you can, you know, have this, you know, you know hundreds of hectares, you know, can plant all these fruits mm. and vegetables and, and what have you, mm. you know. And whereas in, in, in organic farming, it's so much more. You know, this is a, this is a small plot of land. They're smaller, much, but the mm. thing is, they they have they retain the taste. You yeah. know, I yeah. mean, yeah, they might have a nice little worm that'll come and say hi to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Salad. Yeah. But look, look also in in America, for example, look at the um, national anthem, "Amber Waves of Grain." You don't see amber waves of grain anymore in the farmlands mm -hmm. in America because wheat has been reduced to that much because it, it they can harvest it faster. Mm -hmm. so think about it mm -hmm. next time you reach out for that sack of flour <laughs> because mm -hmm. wheat, instead of amber waves of grain flowing in it, 18 inches off the ground. It's kind of scary. You see like rice, for example, there's so many types of rice Strings, now yeah. they've developed where it can grow taller. Mm -hmm. So even though it floods like in Bangladesh or in <laughs> India, <laughs> the tree, the plant doesn't die, you know, it will yeah. just grow taller mm -hmm. and the flood goes away and it grows again, but it's all modified. Mm -hmm. But this thing about genetically modified, I'm not an expert on it, but I think in time to come, people will see, you know, if you look at children now, this is more and more autistic children Right? Are you uh, making I, I an think, assumption that that's because of genetics? I think so, food? because you see, if you look at the world and it's getting healthier and healthier, how come you got more and more kids who are No, autistic? but we're talking of so many other things. We're talking of additives, of dyes, of pesticides, yeah, so and all it that. Must be not the, just genetically no, but, modified. But food. it must be in the food, huh? It must be in the food in some way, whatever they're eating that's causing it. Okay, there's one statistic mm. I have here which I'd like to share. Since the first GM, genetically mm. modified foods, were marketed, more than a decade ago, there has been no reliable evidence mm. that GM foods or crops are harmful to human health or the environment. Mm. But, 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 yeah, but who, you, who mm. did that report? The, no, the but, company that does the GM owner? No, no, these are independent <laughs> companies. What I'm saying is that the, the things that you're talking about, the health uh -huh. problems you're talking about, may not fairly be attributed to GM food. But I think there's not yeah. enough information. And I think that's kind of, a, uh, it's difficult to plan. I think there should be studies that are specifically mm. done for this. I think, right. I mean, if we all go mm. around the room and ask anyone, have you ever eaten genetically modified plant? Mm. I don't think we can conclusively say yes or uh, no. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a problem of measurement. Yeah. Because yeah. The other scary thing is you don't know, but yeah. you yeah. have been importing a lot of yes. genetic, yeah. genetically right. modified. So you don't really know that. Yeah. So that's, yeah. a, that's a big issue. Actually, yeah. mm. And I think yeah. in Singapore, uh, because most of the food is imported, we actually know what's coming in. It may be a great setting to do a study on this particular aspect. We actually know what's coming in, we know the content, mm. we know the way it is grown. 
that has it really caused a change over time i mean mm-hmm. we'll have to control for a lot of other so factors but that's something that that could be yeah. studied as yeah. well and we actually have been consuming genetically yeah, yeah. yeah. sure yeah yeah that's why my hair has all turned grey <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm not saying anything though. <laughs> but uh, coming back to farming uh, as in population campaigns uh, i think also people must farm people who produce food must be responsible you know you must farm responsibly you grow food responsibly it, it all comes back to the conscience you know whatever you do if people have a conscience if the world comes back conscious you know the conscience comes back to businesses and and people in general i think they will we have no problem you know but the trouble is people have forgotten their conscience you know everybody has a price you see and you know, even things about you know responsible farming practices you mm-hmm. you let the the land go fallow you know for yeah to rest to rest you yeah, rather than constantly mm-hmm. intensive farming or mm-hmm. do crop rotation i mean mm-hmm. it's not it's, it's not rocket science mm-hmm. <laughs> and one so, other point mm-hmm. uh, if you look at most of the developed countries i think they are all almost self sufficient in food production because their governments support the farmers and that is a very very strong point that singapore farmers are not well supported to the point that we should be because we are importing 95% yeah, but we of our grow food. enough to feed our people that's well, where you're wrong we can grow we... very productively give let me yeah. give you an example israel yes. have got 7 million population they are basically desert they grow almost oh, they have fertile lands as well that's where oh, you're wrong land. is very productive they are very clever people and what percentage of the people are involved in the production of food what percentage of the 7 million 1% because they are highly productive so we should get the experts right from israel and those countries which are really forward growing countries to come here and teach us how to do it productively but it's also a question of land in israel we have plenty of land at the top look, of the look, HDB look, look, houses can yeah. yeah. 1% of the land yeah. is for farming 2% is for golf courses 12% is roads 15% is housing and 20% is for the army Oh, you you can grow in your garden. Every HDB garden can be a kampung garden. Yeah. Why are we growing prim and proper plants that you can't smoke, that you can't eat, that you can't, uh, you know, do things with? Throw away all the ornamentals that we are importing and maintaining at a high cost, and bring the kampung garden back into every HDB garden. You really believe that we can grow enough food to yes, feed our people? Yes, I think people? we can. I live in the countryside. There's plenty of land. We're not using it productively. <laughs>